Hey, Yerny. Hey, Caesar. Can you help me with my son's homework? Huh? I'm a bit busy, Caesar. Oh, what's the matter? Damn unicorn hunters keep poaching the old coin forest. Oh, what's that mean? Can't get me unicorn meat at a fair price. Welcome to Caesar's Snack Sandwich. Today we're taking a look at Yearn Finance's Vault. Now I wanted to make a video about this vault for a little while and it's not actually a live vault, it's more like a strategy and test right now. But I wanted to make a video about it but it's kind of a simple vault so I didn't want to spend a whole video on it. However, there was a tweet out today that I think warrants this vault being talked about. So let's swing over to Twitter and see what tweet I'm talking about. So here's uh, Carlos Ceza. He's one of the developers that works with both Hedgic and Yearn Finance. Um, I follow him on Twitter and you could probably follow him too. Now you could read this if you want. It'll probably be faster for you to read this. But uh, you don't come here because you want me to read to you. You want me to draw some pictures for you and talk about them. So let's head over to here and talk about this now. So here we are. Okay, so this is the strategy that he's currently working on okay and this is what it looks like so it's a zlot strategy if you don't know what zlot strategy is or what zlot does i'll talk about it a little bit more in a second but the actual product of zlot is not part of this vault so we don't really need to worry about it too much right now when i get further down through the flow chart down in this area here i will explain back to you what this is doing so user has zlot tokens and he wants them to grow so he puts them into the Z lot yearn vault or the yearn strategy or the vault that has this yearn strategy. Okay. Now what does the yearn vault do with these Z lot tokens? They will stick them into the Z lot staking. So on the Z lot staking website, let's swing over there and take a look. Here's the Z finance, Z lot finance, and you go over to Z governance. And you see here is where you could stake it. If you had your own Zlot tokens, you could come in here and stake them. Now by staking Z lot in here, you gain um, Z Hedgic tokens. Okay. Now, if you don't know what these are, I'm not going to get into them all right now. I'll, uh, you, you'll, you'll understand more later. So you get these Z, Z Hedgic tokens just by staking Z lot here. So back to the flow chart. Here we are on the flow chart again. So like I said, user deposits Z lot into the vault, the vault sticks it into the Z lot, Z dot final, Z lot dot finance staking. The staking will earn you Z Hedgic tokens and we want to convert them to Hedgic tokens. So how to do that? We can do that simply on the site here is uh, you would go to stake. And if you had Z Hedgic tokens here, you could withdraw your Hedgix. So Z Hedgic is basically the coin you would get because you deposited Hedgic tokens into this protocol. Okay, so back to the flow chart. So what it's going to do is it's just going to go the opposite way. It's going to withdraw the Hedgic from the Z Hedgic tokens. And then it's going to have a whole bunch of Hedgic tokens, right, from the rewards. Now, what is it going to do with those? It's going to take them over to Uniswap and convert them to ETH. Because, you know, all the pools in Uniswap are ETH pools. Well, most of them, right? So the Hedgic token has to get turned into ETH because there's only ETH versus Hedgic in the Uniswap pools. So then it's got to send it back into Uniswap and convert those to Zlot tokens, buy Zlot tokens, and stick those into the vault. So this person, this user is happy, happy, happy because his Z lots are growing inside the vault. Okay, so that's pretty much the Z lot vault strategy in its entirety. But what he talked about in the tweet was another aspect of this, and that is combining this vault with another vault. Okay, another strategy that he has ran and devi developed and tested already. And it's called the Hedgic Vault. Okay, so this is another user, maybe the same person, but it's a different token from a different wallet or different person or the same person. And they stick it into this Yearn Hedgic Vault. Okay, it's another vault. Now, I made a video on this. You can see that video up in the right hand corner up here if you want, and it'll explain this entire process in entirety. So it will also explain to you what this is doing because this vault, not this vault, this protocol, Zlot protocol is basically doing the same thing as this. So if you watch this video, you will understand what this protocol is doing as well. 
Okay, so this user sticks his hegic in here and it starts. He's got to put it to work, right? So the vault sends it into hegic. So by using 888,000 hegic tokens, you can start earning either BTC, WBTC, or ETH. So let's pretend that we went with ETH first. So they would produce ETH rewards. So we could then claim these ETH rewards from the Hedgic platform. This vault could claim these rewards. Now what's it gonna do with the rewards? It's gonna send them to Uniswap, swap them for Hedgic, and then stick the Hedgic back into the vault, okay? So this is pretty straightforward. It's two strategies working kind of at the same time, independently, with no real like unicity, no symbiosis, right? So let's add a little factor in here. Let's think, why not put these things to work with each other? Because if you see here, this one's selling ETH for Hedgic, and this one's selling Hedgic for ETH, right? So why? Why are we going to use Uniswap to do this? It's going to add up fees. Now in his tweet, he does mention that, you know, the fees are the main reason to avoid, but there's also another risk, right? Let's say I see I'm a coder or a, a hacker or an exploiter, and I see there's a whole bunch of, you know, hedging applying up coming here, and I'm, I know he's going to sell them for ETH. Or, you know, I see he's got a whole bunch of ETH, you know, I know he's getting ready to sell them for hedging. So what am I going to do? I'm going to make a little trade, you know, I'm going to do a little arbitrage in here and try to make a bit of money off of this that I can see coming. So mm, that's not great, right? And it's, it's inefficient, and it's also giving this these fees to people, right? So these opportunities for arbitrage. So let's swing over. So what is he proposing? Is instead he's proposing letting these two interact with each other. So the ETH will instead go, let's go first here. The Hedgic will go straight down into this vault and they will swap it for these ETH. So he will get the ETH, right? The ETH will come in here and become Zlot and go into here. And then the Hedgic will just come straight down into here and get deposited in here. No, there's only one transaction now. This one, the ETH. The ETH will go over here and then they will send it here. But you get the point. The ETH goes in here, becomes Zlot, and then the Zlot gets deposited in here. And it doesn't actually even have to go up to this vault. This one, they could just coordinate with mathematics. You know, oh, I have this much ETH. Oh, I have this much Hedgic. Okay, let's swap them. So I could send in the ETH, turn it into Zlot and stick it in here. So this one could pay that one. And at the same transaction, this one could send its hedging straight into this vault. So as you can see, it's quite nice, right? Now, one more bonus thing he decided to add to it was the fact that Cream Finance is currently pr doing a proposal. It's like two days left and it's already, it's at 100% for it. And that is hedging tokens being used as collateral. So the hedgic that, let's say there's more hedgic here than ETH. So these extra hedgic could be stuck into cream and be gaining until there was a perfect amount where this swap was perfect, right? And also, this one needs to gain 888,000 hedgic tokens before it can interact in this block. Okay, remember the other video, right? If you want to find out what's in here. Before it can send the hedgic tokens in here, it needs 888,000. So what does it do? It just leaves them sitting here doing nothing. So why not stick them in cream, lend them out for a little while, get some APY, and then when this goes up to 888, and it'll go up faster because of the APY, then it can deposit it inside here. So this is a good taste, okay? This is just the surface of what what's gonna be happening in these version two volts, okay? These two volts, these two strategies, maybe it's all one hedgic volt, you know, but it's two strategies interacting with one another and working in symbiosis and protecting each other and reducing fees. This is fantastic stuff, okay? So that's pretty much it. I think that covers it. And uh, I hope this is was good for you and entertaining and thanks for watching goodbye hello thank you so much for watching and um, if you'd like to support the channel there are a few ways you can help me out a lot number one is i have a gitcoin grant this is a pretty unique way to help out
Basically, the way this, this system works is if you supply me with any kind of donation, then the protocol itself will also match your donation with like an increasing amount the more and the more the people donate to me. So for example, if you were to give me one die, the protocol will give me four die, which is great, you know, so your one die can go a long way. So please feel free to come here and check this out. You know, link to this will be in the description. Another way you could support me is by going to YGIFT, link in the description. And here, this where this says collect for me, it would say tip. You tip this and uh, you could give me some YUSD if you want. And uh, that would definitely help me out quite a bit. Um, another way you could support me is you could check out my Rarible store and purchase an NFT. Now the best kind of support is just you watching my videos and liking them and subscribing. So if you did that, thanks so much for doing that and uh, goodbye.